It all started when Steve Chen, Chad Hurley, and Jawed Karim met at PayPal. They were all employees who wanted to branch out from the company. The three had talked about leaving PayPal and starting a new project of their own. They called this project TuneIn Hookup. The website was used as a dating app, and on it, you were able to upload videos of yourself. Using those videos, other users could send a message to you if they wanted to meet up. They used technology and video footage to help everyday people find long-lasting relationships. After the idea of TuneIn Hookup was finalized, Chen, Kareem, and Hurley went to some investors who then proceeded to shut down their idea. They told the three that a dating site based on videos would not succeed because not many people would want to participate in the website. Once the idea of TuneIn Hookup was shut down, the three met up at a dinner in San Francisco. At the dinner, Kareem asked Hurley and Chen if they had seen Janet Jackson's wardrobe malfunction at the Super Bowl in 2004. Hurley and Chen didn't know what Kareem was talking about. The three soon realized that there was no place to find or share videos online. At that moment, the trio came up with the idea to have a digital website named YouTube. On the website, everyone could post content along with see others and share it with their friends. On November 5, 2005, Chad, Steve, and Jawa decided to take their idea to Sequoia Capital, and after introducing the website, they received a $3.5 million investment to start it up. By May of 2005, the three founders' test run website, also known as their beta site, was officially launched. After all the trio had gone through to launch their beta site, it was finally time to upload YouTube's first ever video. The video was called Me at the Zoo and was uploaded by Jawed Karim. The video currently has 57 million views and was recorded by one of Jawed Karim's friends named Yakov Lipitsky. In the video, Jawed is in front of the elephant exhibit at the San Diego Zoo. The video is only 19 seconds long, but was a very historical moment for the rise of YouTube. As YouTube began to expand, more and more videos were uploaded. The content of videos was getting more interesting, which led to videos getting a higher number of views. In September 2005, Ronaldinho's Touch of Gold video for Nike was uploaded. This video was the first on YouTube to reach 1 million views. This prompted the founders to launch YouTube out of beta on December 15, 2005. As YouTube grew, more investors became interested in the idea. Everyone wanted to be a part of this expanding community. In 2006, Google approached the trio with an idea. Google wanted to buy YouTube from the founders because they felt it had much more potential that wasn't being fulfilled. It was a tough decision because the founders had worked very hard to build and contribute to this innovation. Google was being very respectful by making sure that the three investors walked away happy. In the end, Google bought YouTube from the three founders in October 2006 for $1.65 billion under the following conditions. YouTube will remain independently operated at the outset, keeping a separate brand and keeping it its headquarters in San Bruno, and all the YouTube employees will remain in the company. Since Google adopted YouTube, many updates have been made over time, but with all the intentions of the original founders. Many new features have also been added which continues to attract new viewers today. The users of YouTube created such a strong community that provides them with entertainment, friendship, and support. YouTube has also been used to start up careers of many famous stars today, as some may know, Justin Bieber, Dylan O'Brien, Alessia Cara, and Shawn Mendes. YouTube has also started a network of jobs by paying YouTubers $100 for every 1,000 views. Many people such as James Charles, Ninja, PewDiePie, David Dobrik, Zoella, and Shane Dawson have all made a living off of YouTube. They all have different video styles, from gaming to vlogging and making conspiracy theory videos, but they all have used this multi-billion dollar company to share their videos to the world and inspire others. So I oversee all the content for the New York Jets, which includes um, social media, um, digital, like the website, um, all social and um, editorial and traditional media, which is TV shows and things of that nature. So 
know, we're just getting into YouTube, um, you know, on the sports side. We have a channel, you know, the New York Jets have a YouTube channel, and we did stuff when I was with the Giants with YouTube. YouTube is an unbelievable tool because of the freedom that you have to put great content on there and, you know, create YouTube channels and specific um, areas for people to consume your content. I think YouTube is a wonderful tool for individual people and for teams and, and products and brands. And I think if it's used properly, it's awesome. I'm using the term freedom because you could be so creative on YouTube. You know, I think we need to be, as citizens, very, very, very responsible in the way we use social media, including YouTube, all of them. Um, yes, I'm very hypersensitive to what my son is watching, when he's watching it, the language that is used, um, things that cross the line. I really want us all to be, as a society, very responsible about what we put on, uh, for lack of a better term, the airwaves and the way young people, old people, anyone can consume it. Yeah. And it has to, and it, don't you think it has to be, you know, up to parents and teachers and people that are responsible in our society to make sure we're all okay? The mechanism, at least for young people, that's what I want to, I want to make sure that young people are protected because once you become an adult, you know, you're, you're able to make your decisions a little bit more um, responsibly. But for those that are young, we got to find a way to um, monitor and, and, and be able to, you know, let the content that's helpful, useful, uh, tools to learn go through. But the stuff that's harmful, we got to find a way to um, corral that. I would really want us as a society to take a step back and say, geez, it's not really healthy.